Hey friends, it's Akadiris. So for the past couple of years, a lot of you have dwelled into one of my more favorite series on this channel, Detective Aki on the Case, which is a true crime series that I do going over the most infamous cases here in Japan and bring them into the spotlight in great detail. That series has really inspired me to not only go over true crime, but wanting to make more videos about the dark side of Japan. I can easily say that Japan overall is a very safe country to live in, but it's definitely not a country without its dark sides. In this video, I kind of want to go over some cases that have happened in Japan that I don't really think need a Detective Aki video essay done about it because they're very clean cut when I share them. But either way, I still kind of want to go down the list of a few cases that I think are interesting. I might not necessarily make them a Detective Aki episode, but I'm going to share them with you guys. So buckle in because you might not sleep tonight. So the first case I'm gonna go over is Sada Abe. Now I think that there are a couple of videos on YouTube talking about this case, but just to give you the short of it, Sada Abe was sold to a geisha house left to become a prostitute. She retired to work as a waitress in a restaurant and then became involved with the restaurant owner, Ishida. She grew more fond of him and jealous of his wife. Her thought was, is that if she couldn't have him, then no one could. So, she began to plan her murder on Ishida. She killed her lover through erotic asphyxiation during sex. He found it to be a joke at first, until the inevitable happened. She then cut off his genitals and carried them in her kimono as a memento. She was only sentenced to prison for six years. Okay, so if you were ever in Japan and you ever talked about true crime and brought up Sada Abe, there's a good chance that actually someone would probably know what you're talking about. She's pretty famous here. It's enough that there are people that still visit the brothel that she was arrested at, which is still standing today. In fact, she is so well known in Japan that she has had multiple movies made about her. そして今テレビで初めて本人がその事件の真相を語る。殺してくれっていう何でまた言ったんだ。だからあそこ出る時にね、何回持ってきたいという気持ちになるのはこの当たり前のことでしょ。何かその人をね、人間を撃つとか気
five grams of cyanide. This discovery was then aired on the news. The next day, Nakazawa's wife grew paranoid after seeing the news about the tea. She checked the oolong tea can in question and did in fact find a hole at the bottom, which had been sealed with a transparent material. She then alerted the police. Police confirmed that one of those cans was purchased and consumed by Nakazawa. In fact, he was the only one who actually ever purchased one of those tampered drinks. The culprit responsible for tampering with the cans of tea was never found. I'm getting just like flashbacks to just the Jonestown incident. He was literally the only person that purchased one of those tampered cans. So they obviously never found him, which is baffling to me because this happened at a grocery store you would think that something like that could be found i have a feeling that there should have been some pretty hardcore evidence with something like that and props to the wife that she was paranoid enough to even check the oolong tea can it was actually a miracle that that can was still even around there for her to check because this was already i want to say like a day or two after he had passed away so that can was somewhere maybe it was in the trash can she looked through it and she just happened to find that that's one of the worst things about anxiety anxiety is like you are constantly just paranoid and thinking of impending doom but most of the time it doesn't happen the worst thing is that all of your assumptions come true and in that moment i can't imagine what that wife must have been going through having her fears just confirmed like that now for the last case that i'm going to talk about this one is probably the most extensive and it's probably one of the most grotesque ones on this list but we're gonna call it the case of the pregnant woman in nagoya It was 1988 and a 27-year-old housewife was living in Nagoya with her husband at their apartment. She was in full-term pregnancy and the happy couple were looking forward to the birth of their first child. They were expecting a boy. One morning, the wife sends her husband off to work as usual. As the day goes on, the husband calls his wife at around 12 p.m. to check up on her. There was nothing out of the ordinary. He called again at around 6.50 p.m to let his wife know he was on his way back home, but no one answered the phone. He decided to go home, thinking that it wouldn't be a big deal and she'd be home when he got back. He arrived home an hour later. He noticed the front door was unlocked and the room lights were off. He felt suspicious, but went to the bedroom to change. He then heard a baby crying from the living room. Thinking that the baby had just been delivered while he was away, he ran to the living room and found his wife on the ground, motionless, with the newborn baby crying softly under the mother's feet. He went to call for 911, but the phone was mysteriously nowhere to be found. He ran to the first floor to borrow the phone of one of the neighbors, who later reported that he was pale in the face. They lent him their phone to call for emergency help. He yelled, I need an ambulance right now. The emergency crew members arrived believing that they were to help deliver a baby. But when they arrived, they found the woman strangled with a cord and her abdomen already cut open. The fetus was taken out of the belly and replaced with a telephone. As in, the fetus was literally taken out and the culprit shoved a telephone into the victim's belly. This was found out when the crew removed it while transporting her to the hospital. The baby was also injured with cuts caused by the delivery. After a blood transfusion that was donated by the grandfather and 10 days at the hospital, the baby made a miraculous recovery. An investigation took place, but the culprit was never found. One theory suggests that the killer's motive was the desire to cut out a pregnant woman's abdomen with his own hands. Another theory was that the killer simply wanted to look inside of a pregnant woman's body. The father was luckily proven innocent after extended speculation, and the identity of the family and the baby have remained private ever since. When I was researching that, there was a moment that I couldn't even type up that script because I just kept reading through just thinking, what kind of monster would strangle a pregnant young woman who is in full term? I have heard rumors that this baby still lives not knowing that this case is about them and they don't know exactly what happened during the birth. That's just a rumor. Would you want to tell your kid you have a wife that is 
expecting to give birth at any moment, when she doesn't answer the phone, of course there's gonna be alarms going off in your head. And then you get home and you hear a baby crying and already the first thought you have is, oh my God, my wife just gave birth. That would already freak me out right? If I was the husband. But not only that, you walk into the living room and you find your wife just dead on the ground with your newborn child. How do you even process that? What are you supposed to feel in that moment other than just absolute just fear and horror and trauma? The reason I listen and watch true crime is because I'm more fascinated by the psychology of it because you just don't hear these types of things come out until unfortunately the worst has already happened right and you just need to know what led up to this point how could a human being be pushed to, to those limits you know that's why I watch it but there are some people that watch it to glorify and almost sexualize the serial killer I've never understood that I'm more into like the psychology bit of it and also kind of like the cat and mouse race that comes along with it when there's an investigation going on I don't like what happened of course I personally wish that these victims didn't go through these terrible things but the fact that they have and you can't just help but want to know. That is just humans being curious. So all of these cases that I've shared with you guys, either the culprit was never found or their punishment was just the bare minimum. With that last story, right, that couple is essentially my age. I'm 30. And at that age, you're a young couple ready to give life into the world and it's just taken away from you. And not only that, now you carry on that trauma for the rest of your life. And I... And I really hope to God that that man has found some sort of peace of mind in this world. I truly don't know how you can come back from that. I only talk about true crime, right? And doing the research sometimes does get mentally exhausting uh, because you just need to like step away and touch grass and refresh your mind. I can't imagine what it's like to be an actual detective, an investigator, and seeing the actual scenes in front of you. I don't think that I'm cut out for. I am. That is definitely not for me. I'm just here reporting what has already already been reported. So that was three of many cases in Japan that I wanted to share with you guys. If you guys appreciated this kind of content, let me know. And if there's any cases that you guys want me to talk about, feel free to comment them down below or shoot me a tweet or on my Instagram or whatever. But I appreciate you guys for watching and subscribe to my channel for more content and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!